Welcome to video number three in the EPIC series. In this video, we take a look at what the EPIC model includes. Right now, EPIC has six different interconnected parts, or modules. Before we go on, there are two things to mention. First, computer models require data, or information, from specific sources. The EPIC model developers took information from previous research studies and clinical experts, and they put that information into the modules. To know where the developers got this information, please watch EPIC video number five on information sources. Second, everything that's included in the EPIC model had to be defined in a specific way, taking many factors into consideration. Some definitions are briefly defined in this video. But to know more detail about how EPIC defines things, please ask us. Our contact info is at the end of all of our videos. Now let's review the six EPIC modules. Module number one is on demographic characteristics and risk factors for COPD. This part of the model starts by representing or simulating individual Canadian people age 40 and older. These simulated people are computer representations, so they're far less complex than real people. In EPIC, each person is described in terms of seven things. First, their sex, age, height, and weight. Next, what province they live in and whether they're an immigrant to Canada. Then, whether they're a current or former smoker, and if so, how much smoking they've experienced. This is done by calculating pack years of smoking, which is the approximate number of cigarettes smoked per day, multiplied by the approximate number of years as a smoker. Before we move on, please note that the demographic and risk factors just mentioned are not the only ones relevant to COPD. For more on this issue, please watch EPIC video number six on future directions. This brings us to module number two, which is on COPD occurrence. In this part of the model, it's important to define what exactly COPD is. To do this, EPIC uses a measure of lung function. This measure considers two things. One, the amount of air you can force out from your lungs in one second is called FEV1. Two, the amount of air you can force from your lungs overall without the one second time limit is called FVC. Both FEV1 and FVC are measured after taking a full breath in. To define COPD, the model uses the ratio of these two measurements. That is, FEV1 divided by FVC. If the ratio is within what's normally seen in the general population, then a person does not have COPD. If the ratio is lower than that, then a person does have COPD. With this definition in place, the EPIC model can describe how many Canadians have COPD and how many are projected to have it in the future. To do this, the model uses information about the estimated number of Canadians with COPD. It also uses information from Module 1 about demographics and risk factors for COPD. It then projects the number of new cases of COPD over time. This involves doing a computer simulation of the future at different time points. But let's take a closer look at how exactly the model does this. To get started, the model begins by simulating individual people, one by one. Whenever the model simulates an individual, it first determines whether the simulated person has COPD right from the start. If the simulated person does not have COPD at the start, then the clock starts to tick for them. Over time, they may or may not develop COPD, depending on their risk factors. In the model, when a person develops COPD at a certain time point, the model takes note of this new case and updates the number of existing cases. New cases of COPD are only considered new at the time point they happen. At the next time point, what was considered a new case is now considered an existing case. Now we're on module number three. Module three is about lung function. When a simulated person in the EPIC model has or develops COPD, the model assigns them a level of lung function. This is done in terms of FEV1, the amount of air you can force from your lungs in one second. 
The model then simulates changes in lung function over time. This is done in terms of the worsening of FEV1. The model also assigns each simulated person a level of COPD severity. This is done by comparing a person's actual FEV1 to the FEV1 that would normally be predicted for a person of the same age, sex, and height. So COPD severity is based on the difference between a person's actual lung function and the lung function they would be expected to have if they didn't have COPD. EPIC module number four is on COPD exacerbations. This part of the model predicts the experience of people with COPD in terms of a specific clinical outcome called exacerbations. These are episodes of worsening symptoms, sometimes called flare-ups. The EPIC model defines four levels of severity for exacerbations. Mild exacerbation means that symptoms get worse but the person doesn't visit a doctor as a result of them. Moderate exacerbations means that symptoms get worse, the person visits a doctor or emergency department, and is prescribed antibiotics or anti-inflammatory medications. However, the person is not hospitalized. With a severe exacerbation, symptoms become worse and the person is admitted to the hospital. Finally, with a very severe exacerbation, Symptoms become worse and the person is admitted to the intensive care unit. It is possible that a person with a severe or very severe COPD exacerbation will die from it. This very serious outcome is modeled in a separate module. Module number five is on mortality. This part of the model does two things. One, it estimates the number of deaths that will happen among Canadians over time. Two, it estimates the number of deaths that will happen among people with COPD over time, specifically as a result of severe or very severe exacerbations. Module number six is referred to as the payoffs module. It's called this because it aims to describe how things could potentially improve if we made specific investments or policy changes relevant to COPD. More specifically, this part of the model does two things. First, it estimates COPD-related medical costs. These are medical costs that people with COPD will have over time, specifically as a result of COPD. So for example, if a person with COPD also has diabetes, they may have medical costs from diabetes. But the EPIC model doesn't track these costs. It only tracks costs from COPD. In EPIC, COPD-related medical costs are estimated separately for when people are and aren't experiencing exacerbations. So the model estimates COPD-related healthcare costs generally, as well as healthcare costs specifically linked to exacerbations. The second thing this module does is estimate quality adjusted life years, or QALYs for short. QALYs are a common outcome measure in health economics. In brief, QALYs combine information about two things. One, quality of life. Two, length of life for an individual person. The purpose of calculating qualities is to help estimate how much a health condition or a treatment for a health condition will affect people. The way qualities are calculated, they also help compare this information across different health conditions. For this reason, qualities are often of interest to health policymakers. That brings us to the end of video three. To know more about quality adjusted life years and how they're calculated, or more about the EPIC modules, please ask us. You can send us a message on Twitter at Peer Models or on our website at peermodelsnetwork.com.